Well, look at this. It is uh, another time for Nobody Asked For This. That was a very not graceful introduction, but it's cool. Happy Friday. How y'all doing? Yet another interesting week that we've survived. Look at y'all being here. Uh, today's conversation is going to be fun because this is the first time I've gotten a chance to actually really dig into um, conversation uh, with this friend on exactly what they do. So we're going to do it right now. Let's bring Carly up. <laughs> there we go. And the technology is working. There we go. Hey, 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 there we are. Hey. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Yeah. Welcome. For those uh, tuning in from Carly's side that are like, what's happening? <laughs> My name is Jason E.C. Wright. I am founder and director at Bernstein Research Society. Uh, we're an institute of design research and critical thought, which basically means we provide places for people to figure out how do you think a bit deeper about the things that you're interested in and how can you do better research when you're designing products and experiences for people. And part of that is this series that we call Nobody Asked For This, which is being in conversation with people like Carly. And so that's what we are doing here. And for those on the Burnt Sienna side that are like, ooh, who's today's guest? What's happening? This is Miss Carly Carpio. Little background, um, Carly is a millennial. Um, is a founder, is a self-care entrepreneur, is a podcaster, is a super dope human person that cares a lot about other people, um, but is not gonna take your baggage. We're gonna no. pin that. Um, definitely someone that we share a lot of uh, interesting conversations because both of us are growing up in different Midwestern cities. You actually were raised in Midwest city, Oklahoma, which was not <laughs> <Nope>. very inventive. <laughs> not at all. But you said you were born in Chula Vista, right? Yep, born in California. Thank God I made my way back. But then my mama moved back home. She's from Oklahoma originally, and I was raised there. Um, which actually I wouldn't consider Oklahoma Midwest. It's like the it's very country. I wouldn't necessarily say it's the South, but it's not quite Midwest either. We're a little bit in the middle, like literally. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird place. Like, people from the Midwest are like, oh, it's this cluster. Then it's like, yeah, but does that include, like, St. Louis and Kansas City and all that stuff like that? And then it gets to be that little funny territorial, like, are you Southern or are you not? So that's exactly. always a fun conversation. Um, but you talked about how growing up, um, you definitely were around a lot of very conservative Christian uh, mindsets, mm -hmm. very, you know, Bible Belt-ish, like things that you can do, can't do, whatever. But that you really identify with, creator culture now, especially with what you do with Holistically Dope and with Carly's Couch. I want to talk a little bit about your personal history and like kind of how you got here. Like, yeah, you grew up around those things. What did you see that made you say, you know what, I think that I'm going to go to school and try to figure this life thing out. And this is what I want to study. How did you arrive at what you even wanted to study in school? And then how did that all change to get us to <laughs> The holistically dope and Carly's couch. Oh man, that's you know I'm a, I'm gonna be concise as concise as possible. Um, oh, we got time. <laughs> growing up in Oklahoma, I said it's very conservative and close-minded because it is. If you're paying attention to the news, you saw that they just have the strictest abortion bill. That if an 11 year old girl got raped, she would not be able to get an abortion. Um, she would be forced to have that. Like it's it's crazy out there. Um, and that's how closed-minded it is. So I don't even know if I would call it conservative so much as closed-minded. It's like, there's mm -hmm. one way to do a thing. You do this thing. Like, I was always raised, like, you have to go to college. Otherwise, you're not going to be successful. Right. Um, and also, you don't need no man. You need to make sure you can take care of yourself. Um, you know, so just in this very independent, um, mostly single mother, below poverty income household. And so I just knew that I wanted more for myself. Um, so far as like going to college was easy. School's not hard. Um, for some people it is, for me, it was not, it was not, it was something I knew I needed to do to get out of the situation that I was in and that I wanted a better life. Um, and so I went to the university of Oklahoma, Boomer Sooner, um, for undergraduate. And I actually ended up majoring in engineering, um, because I was interested in building buildings. So I used to be obsessed with the Sims, like obsessed oh, with, oh my God. 
but yeah. not like the people. I could care less about what they're doing. I just wanted to create their spaces. I wanted to build their homes. I wanted to design them. I used that Cinderella, that Rosebud cheat code the whole time and just wrapping it up and building stuff. Yeah. Oh, wow, wow. You know? And so then when I got to college, I was like, oh, I want to be an architectural engineer. And then the college counselor told me what that is and told me that it was a very like lonely, very singular, in an office by myself, not really talking to people type position. And I was like, I don't want to do that. And she's like, well, try construction. And I was like, so you want me to go to school for four years to work in construction? And she was like, just take a class, see if you like it. So I took a class and I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. I can build shit. Like, essentially, I was like, oh, yeah. I'm like, I don't even know if I can curse on here, but I was excited because I was like, oh, I get to build things. I get to like, you could draw something on a napkin and I could help you build it. And that's right. what got me into construction. I love the idea of being able to help people bring their dreams to life. And so I make a joke that I went from being a construction engineer to a life engineer. Um, the thought is the same. The idea mm -hmm. is the same, but it completely changed. Because after working in that for a few years, I realized that it looks like that theoretically, but the implementation of what the job is is not that. It's a lot yeah. more monotonous. Um, a lot more getting old, rich, white men richer. And I'm just not, I'm not about dedicating my life to doing that. And I was like, man, how can I do something that like brings me joy, that gets me bread, but like my triple bottom line was I want to make sure that I'm making a difference. Like, how do I do that? Like, what does that yeah, even look like? Yeah. So I'm working at DFW International Airport. If you've ever flown through there, you're welcome. We did the terminal renovations and stuff there. Oh, word. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I was like, man, I'm not happy. But I didn't know what to do. So I was like, okay, let me go back to school. Because that's what I was raised on, right? Like, that's how you get right. to the next thing. They never know anything else. Um, so started applying to business schools. Um, actually got into um, ESA, which is a school in Barcelona for the full-time oh, MBA right. program, okay. and wanted to go there. It um, was the number three school in the world at the time, but then my financial aid fell through. And so last minute, I applied to UT and USC and picked USC. Um, so fight on. That's how I ended up in LA, back in LA, you know, back where I'm from, essentially. Um, yeah, to, to join the full-time MBA program. Yeah. And, so that's what got me back out to LA in the interim, like of studying for the GMAT and doing all that stuff. I got my personal training certification um, mm -hmm. because I had torn my ACL in college and in my recovery and learning how to work out, a lot of people were asking me questions and I realized I had a passion for essentially helping people on their journeys. I, I saw that what I was doing helped others. And so then I started doing training and I was like oh I could do this on the side in business school not understanding what business school was for real but <laughs> right. I was like <laughs> I was like I can do this on the side and make money so that's how I started doing personal training so I had that you know for three years before I even went to business school um and then went to the full-time MBA program at SC and start like my focus was in social entrepreneurship so okay. entrepreneurship but focused on how to make a difference in the community and seeing what right. that looks like so building social enterprises not just a nonprofit that's reliant on grants and other people's money and donors, but truly building something that's able to be self-sustainable because the economy is unpredictable. The world is unpredictable. You want to build something that helps build itself essentially. Right. So that is how holistically dope was born. Okay. Um, and I mean, yeah, I don't, it, it's so interesting how that kind of came together because I graduated in 2017 Um from the full-time MBA program, chose not to pursue a job uh, and was like, I'm going to go full force into this business, not knowing what that meant either. Shout out to my friend Stacey Ann for letting me live on her couch for a little bit. <laughs> that's, real. that's real in LA, especially if you're doing entrepreneurial things. Oh, yeah. um, man, but I started doing personal training. I started hustling. I ended up getting my yoga teaching certification. Okay. And that's when stuff started kind of, kind of clicking for me. Like in school, I was like, oh, I want to do programming for schools, but I wasn't a certified yoga teacher yet. And I hadn't okay. put all the pieces together. But once I got certified, um, I was like, man, I want to work in schools. And so I launched my first program uh, that spring of 2018 um, in conjunction with Girls Build LA, wonderful organization. And top girls about holistic health and wellness. You have these young women about mindfulness, um, health and nutrition, exercise, but we also talked a lot about self-love, like affirmations, journaling, like all of these things that become a self-care toolkit. And so that was 2018. I've had 
probably four more school programs. Um, I've taught teachers. I've taught in the Navy. I taught some upper level officials about mindfulness and listening yeah. and uh, stress resiliency and self care. Um, taught with the American Heart Association and a bunch of other companies just in all everything in the arena of how to live your best life and create a life that kind of looks good like to you right. not to whatever standard you think you have to be living up to but to whatever feels good for you and then in the fall of 2018 um one of my friends Alexia um was like hey we should do a podcast and I was like okay that's cool and she was like yeah we're gonna call it Carly's Couch and I was like huh and she was like, yeah, we're going to call, call it Carly's couch. And we're going to, she was like, you know, I feel like you have a lot of wisdom and things to share with people and you just need a platform. And she was like, you know, I, I enjoy having the conversations with you. I feel like I grow and there's not a place for people to talk about these kind of things that we talk about and that we grow through together. And so I think it will be great if we did that, you know, with, with each other. And so we launched the podcast in September of 2018 and this week is episode 185 weeks in a row. Oh. Oh. So for those of you that are just now finding out about this, uh, y'all have uh, plenty of backstory content to catch up on. Because uh, um, this wasn't some like, oh, in the pandemic, I'm going to start a podcast. It was like, a, oh, no, OK, how do we keep doing this thing that we were already doing for two years before that? Yeah. And that, like, that also got interesting because COVID and seeing yeah. people and travel and going home to see family, you know, so we, shout out to us. Like, I, I, I don't think I realized the gravity of 185 until I talk about it like that. Yeah. We do whatever. It's, it's been every Monday since we started. And she's had a podcast before. Alexia is amazing. Um, her at is Lex underscore Topia. So if you don't know who I'm talking about, go check her out. She is phenomenal. Right. Um, but yeah 185 episodes and it was under the guise of just creating a space for people to have real conversations to be vulnerable but essentially with the thought of being able to create your best life and really figure out what that means like specifically yeah. for you not just like the the little cliche like oh i'm gonna get this little you know cheap ass t-shirt that says live your best life it's like no but yeah, like, nah. what does that mean for you it's not anything trite which is interesting because you just fully gleaned over the fact that you were also participating in athletic programs while also studying in school and injured yourself. So like, that's a different type of mental discipline that you learn through sports and organized sport activities, as well as learning construction and how things mm -hmm. come together. But it's almost like you've always been in spaces that have trained you on the dynamics of people. And how do you build people up? How do you bring them together? How do you get people to move towards a common goal? But then also you were understanding how the mechanics of your body work and building that thing up while also understanding the mechanics of how to build a space for people. That's a wild parallel. And a necessary one that is so often missed. That's why my company is called Holistically Dope because people so easily and I mean it's not easy to get your body where you want it to be like that's a lot of work and a lot of discipline and shout out to everybody who's you know really dedicated to that that's a lot of work but that's not yeah. the only thing that matters and there's so much focus on how we look that like a lot of people can get to their peak physical condition but aren't taking care of their mental health they can't tell you what they want they can't tell yeah. you what their desires are what their dreams are they can't like they, they still don't love themselves. Like they find themselves when, when you get to this peak physical, physical condition and you still don't love yourself because you haven't done that internal work. And it's not easy. Right. It's not fun. Nece sometimes it is. But it's so necessary to do those things. And that's why it's called holistically dope. And so I think that's why a lot of people, myself included, are like confused at all the things that I do because it really does encompass everything because it's so mm -hmm. necessary. Yeah. And what were you, what, what sport were you in? Oh, so I actually, I played volleyball, basketball, track, you know, soccer. I've done all those things. And not, not in college. In college, um, I went to a big university. So I was like a D2 level sports player. Shout out to me, though. But in college, I did. And I just played intramurals. Embarrassing fact, I actually tore my ACL in a stroll-off competition for my sorority. Embarrassing so fact. So you were yeah. stepping, stepping. <laughs> like, Somebody for those that don't me. know the Somebody importance of that, 
<laughs> go go watch uh, School Days and go watch Beyonce's Homecoming and then go to your nearest HBCU's Homecoming and find you a new friend and you will understand all that. Go to a Neil fight. See see what see what the fuss is. You about. know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, shout out to the Delta. But yeah, that's the, that's actually how I tore my ACL. Um, that's yesterday. absolutely hysterical. Oh, oh my Neo, my Neos clown me relentlessly, as they should. It's funny. Oh, shut up, Quaylen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody just came for you in these comments. Oh, but man, it's interesting, right. like you for those people that don't understand the gravity of like why this is funny to like have these jokes, I'm gonna slow it down real quick. If you are attending any university anywhere, you already have your regular studies. Then you add to it the mental compartmentalization of going to practice, doing all of the exercise, understanding that, and then like you're also tired. So you got to balance I had those things out. College. And and working. Then on top of that, you throw in a sororal social organization that is legendarily known for how high level philanthropy works and in action and like sleeves rolled up like there are a few unfair stereotypes about a few sororities especially in the you know NPHC and the Divine 9 but and if y'all don't know that, just do your Googles. I don't have time for that. But Deltas are definitely accurate for the stereotype of always doing the work. For sure. Change. For sure. And doing all that while still trying to figure your life out, trying to figure money out, trying to figure your identity and where you stand in the world, there's no greater parallel for how the real world works, um, I think, than that. And so while the college experience may not be for everyone, especially financially or even intellectually, what you learn about yourself, about your own resiliency, about your own capacity, that'll give you the confidence to be like, well, I mean, I guess I could try this thing because I figured that thing out, right? And those parallels are really important. But a specific parallel I wanted to ask was, before we get into talking about your process of how you present programming for Holistically Dope and also maybe how like you guys went about the podcast, I really want to know if there was anyone that gave you a bit of an inspiration or a, hey, that's a cool thing to do that introduced you to the idea of holistic wellness and that being a way of helping people, setting a baseline, but also, oh, I could also make a living off of this? interesting like what 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 was that who was that for you or where was that for you so it's so funny you don't realize like everything happens for a reason nothing is an accident everything happens for a reason but sometimes you don't see it until much much later um 2022 is the 10 year anniversary of my self-love journey like 10 years ago this year i sat out on this journey intentionally like i'm like man i'm gonna learn how to love myself and I have to give all credit to my mentor at the time. Her name is Katrina McGee. Right mm. now, she's the chief marketing officer for American Heart Association. But at oh, the wow. time, she was doing her own entrepreneurial thing. Um, and we were at Zumba. And after we left Zumba, we were talking. And she, um, I was, like, talking about something. And she, like, introduced me to this book called Codependent No More by Melody Beatty. She had introduced me to The Artist Way by Julia Cameron. And I had been doing my reading. Like, I love learning. Like, that is the thing. I'm always learning, always trying to get better. And then one day she asked me, do you love yourself? <laughs> Duh. Doesn't everybody love themselves? And then I, like, sat with it. And it kind of hit me like a ton of bricks later. I was like, mm. I don't even know what that means, to be honest. Wow. Like, we say that. Like, you can say, like, yeah, I love myself. But it's like, are your habits in alignment with that? Are your thoughts in alignment with that? Is your energy spent doing things to really love on yourself and pour into yourself and I realized that mine wasn't and there was a big disconnect um you know shortly after I started doing yoga that's when I found your yoga found me rather I used to hate it and as a yoga teacher I get it when y'all don't like yoga trust me I used to think it was stupid like well I'm gonna stretch go to a class to stretch for an hour okay <laughs> yeah just keep going just keep going I don't, mm -hmm. I don't even have to sell you the yoga will do the work I don't even have to say anything else but um that's whenever my self-love journey started and that conversation with her really 
was the catalyst for where I am today. Um, because I hadn't ever known that that was a thing. And as like, and I'm saying known that that was a thing, known that self love was a thing, known that my energy can be spent doing things that I enjoy. Like I don't have to work so hard until I die. Like if everything is not born of pain and these really hard lessons learned. Like you can learn things in love Dang, and in peace and enjoy. Like I remember one of my favorite things about her was her boundaries. So if we had plans, she might text me the morning of and say, hey, actually today I'm not feeling it. And I, like, at first I hurt my feelings, but then I realized like, wow, that's so amazing that you put yourself before anything else. What would that look like if I learned how to do that in my life? Mm. And I say that 10 years later, still working on it. So, you know, you know, we still out here. It um, is a journey consistently but, and continually for sure. Shout out to my friend Eric that's in here. We talk about this consistently. It's like, as soon as you think you've reached a level, cool. Let's make sure you really know that. Reapply your certification. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's, let's go spend some time with your family. Level up, level up. <laughs> now we on quantum self love journey. You know what I'm saying? Like, we mm -hmm. keep leveling up, but it was that thought. And so when I was in business school, I remember the first year, because um, they try to kill you the first year, they give you so many classes and so many things just to weed people out and to make the school look rigorous. Like, whatever. I get the politics behind it. a little thing that limits my time on Instagram, so. <laughs> oh, right, because boundaries for yourself. I, you know, I feel it. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, I was trying to fit in kind of a little bit. I kind of lost myself. I started getting distracted by all the nice, shiny tech jobs, by all the consulting jobs and stuff in college. And then in the first year, and then the second year, I was like, I don't like that. I ended up mm. interning with the school district in South Central which made me realize I wanted to stay in LA. I used to not like LA when I first got here because USC has a very University of Spoiled Children view of Los Angeles, which is not fair to the people that are from here because the people yeah. that are from here are dope. Um, it's a lot of the transplants that ruin it for folks. But yeah. when, when I started working in South Central, you know, I started meeting people from here and realized there's such a community here and that I could use my talents and my skills and put them together, my business mind, my heart, my holistic health knowledge, my physical health knowledge, and like build these programs for these schools and these kids and these people um, in a way for something that's not being met. Like there's a need for it. And that's actually what got me to stay here. Word, word. That is, you said a lot of points that have kind of been picked up throughout various episodes um, of this broadcast. And I think the bigger takeaway is not just that cognitive disassociation between what people feel about Los Angeles versus the actual experience of once you get beyond the veneer and ingratiate yourself in the community. Yeah. Like you only get out of it what you put into it. And if you're not contributing to the community, you're not going to get anything out of it. But also the purest definition of community is not what can I get from this community? But what can I give? Yeah. And when you know what you can give, what you receive becomes almost incidental, but you didn't do it for reciprocation. Mm -hmm. You did it because, oh, I have this thing. Where is the space I can go to contribute this thing for the sake mm -hmm. of that's what I'm supposed to do, right? Um, but what does that look like in process? Maybe it's a little bit difficult for some people to identify. And once you've gone through the rigor of figuring out what your, you know, USP is in a specific space of what can I offer that's, you know, not different, but just like accurate to me and this, that, and the other, and you've gone through all the business plan ideas and blah, 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 blah. It's like, now I need to present this to people. Well, you figured out that on one end programming, that was going to be part of it and mm -hmm. what you wanted to pull from all of your experiences and the things that you've learned. Now that you have that, what's your process for, how you decide where to offer that, who you're going to offer it to. Uh, does it start with who you want to impact and who's already aligned with that? Does it start with just reaching out to nonprofits and organizations that have shown that they have a need and just have the gap in that? Like, what's your process for selecting that? Because I think anyone watching this that is looking to figure out where am I probably missing the point on my practice and like, am I pitching to the right people or like, where's the disconnect to where there's a friction? What's your process for evaluating where you present your programming? And then once you've selected it, how does the program roll out? And so 
Great question. I'm still figuring this out myself. <laughs> so I'm, I'm talking through this. This is by no means as someone talking down. We're, we're here together. Mm -hmm. um, I am blessed because uh, in, in my hustle, like I do what I have to do to make ends meet and do things, especially, you know, choosing not to do a consulting job or something like that straight out of business school. Your girl had bills. So mm -hmm. I started um, doing personal training. Then I started coaching volleyball for middle school. Like I'm literally hustling. Like I am doing all the things, running around. And in me hustling, what's for you doesn't miss you. I ended up making friends with teachers at this middle school. And they were like, well, what else do you do? And I was like, oh, you know, and I just started spouting off all these things. We're like, well, do you want to teach us yoga? So I started teaching them yoga during their retreats. And they were like, would you want to do a kids program here? That's the place that I did my first kids program. You know, they're just being in those spaces. And so if you're not sure where to be, maybe just start doing the work. Um, like really givers gain is the best way to do anything and not for those opportunities. Like you said earlier, those are incidental. Those come from you doing the work, but you have to put yourself in the position to actually see people and meet people and be in the community. You want to work in the community? Go work in the community. You don't know how to do that? Go sit at a coffee shop. Start making friends. Start meeting people. Start asking mm -hmm. questions. How can I help you? That's literally how I got my first couple jobs. And then um, one of the other people who really inspires me, who helped me kind of conceptualize what holistically dope could be, what it looks like, what it is. Her name is Charlie Kemp. Um, and as of today, she just successfully defended her doctoral um, project this morning. So she is Dr. Charlie Kemp, but she's from South Central. Shout out and to that. Shout out to her. She has an amazing nonprofit called Change the Tune, um, using music, food, holistic health and wellness, and um, entrepreneurship to change the tune of after school programming. Kids actually end up spending 80%, I think, of their time outside of school. Mm. And the gap between wealthy communities and, you know, communities who are under resourced, which I still hate that word, but yeah. um, I think the spending gap per child per year was like in the couple hundred thousands. And so per not only child? are child, it's crazy. I'll have to send you the data. It's all on the website. But um, oh, wow. Charlie, I met her when I was interning uh, between my first and second year of business school. We became friends. We had coffee once, kept hanging out forever. That's my girl. Charlie and Carly is the thing. But she knew and like she had this bigger vision for her nonprofit and me supporting her showing up where she needs me. She's like, hey, do you want to help us develop, you know, mindfulness and holistic health and wellness content for our kids? Like that's a great that's a great pillar that we need in this community. And so by doing that for her nonprofit, it kind of helped me visualize what it looks like in other places. Um, because my first program in schools was very hodgepodge. I was like, uh, let's do modules and let's do this and let's do that. And I'm still trying to figure out, you know, what are my few topics um, that I want to present and that I want to specialize in. But then there's the part of me who is multi-passionate and wants to talk about everything and wants to do everything. And I'm like, well, how, how does all of this work? But as for now, I would just say, if you're confused, pick a thing. It doesn't have to be the one you stick to forever, but you have to pick a thing and you have to start doing work in the community. Like you really yeah. have to just be there. You can offer your services for free. I'm not saying don't get your worth, but in the beginning, sometimes you got to prove your worth. Sometimes you mm -hmm. have to show who you are, you know, so people can see like, oh, wow, I really need that. And like, if you're not there talking to people, like you're not able to do that. And like, you're like, could you could post on Instagram and that's cool. But the best way is to be in people's faces. And I know that's harder in COVID for sure. Yeah. But as the world starts to open back up, like that's the best way is to just start putting yourself out there. And that's also good for you because trial and error, you get to learn like, oh, I like this. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, these are not, like I discovered, kids are not my ideal audience. I actually prefer teaching holistic health and wellness stuff to adults. I do still teach kids. I love kids. They're not my mm -hmm. ideal audience. I wouldn't have known that had I not been teaching in schools for three years. And I think that's the point of what you're saying. You said something earlier about, uh, I don't have to sell you on yoga, the yoga will do the work. Oh, like, yeah, the, the yoga, yoga will teach work. you. And so it's the same thing, your practice will tell you what your practice is. Hold on. Practice verb versus practice noun. Your practice verb will tell you what your practice noun is. Doing the thing you think you want to do will tell you what the thing is you want to do looks like. It's a real thing. 
It's a very That's real it. thing. Somebody said, just, yeah, chop wood, carry water, and you'll figure out what your rhythm is, the way that your body, your mind, your habits contribute to it. One of my favorite quotes about that is, everyone starts off copying a master, whether it's choreography, yeah. whether it's martial arts, whether it's yoga, whether it's painting, whatever the case may be. But where you fail at being exactly like the master is where you succeed in being 100% yourself. Yourself. Where you're like, oh, I'm getting it wrong. You're not getting it wrong from the master. You're figuring out how to get it right for yourself. I really want to say that again because somebody needs to hear this. Same. Whatever point you come into this. Where you get it wrong from trying to match the standard is where you've gotten it right for yourself to set the standard for yourself. Because getting it wrong is only in comparison to someone else's way of doing it, the way that their circumstances were set up, their references were set up, their constitution was set up. But when you start doing something that deviates from that, but it still works, that's your way. That's 100% yours. You get to keep that. That's yours. You're welcome. Go patent it inside of your soul. Like, that's it. And, and that's the beautiful part about creating things. And I also think that's where people mess up. So yes, and, because that's beautiful. And y'all run that back and listen to that as many times as you need to, to get it. What I'll say is like, I'm creating something I've never seen before. So I'm inspired and I have people that I look up to that have poured into me, but I'm like building this plane as I'm flying it. I'm literally mm -hmm. in the air, trying not to, you know, careen into the ground right now. Um, and I think also then, even though we don't know, we can still get caught up in this loop of not being sure if we're doing the right thing or building it 100%. in the right way. And so, you know, that's, that's big for me is like, you really got to throw all that stuff out the window. Cause all that does is paralyze me. And I've realized I'm only speaking to myself here. Mm -hmm. Um, my fear of messing up or not doing it right has only held me back. It never has helped me push me forward. The only yeah. time that I've you know, succeeded is when I just went for things. Like, you can figure it out afterwards, but you just mm -hmm. got to keep moving, like, one foot in front of the other. Yeah, it's like, here's the thing. You can feel how you want to about certain things and be like, oh, I don't want to take this L. But two L's make a square. And with that square, you can build a foundation. So mm -hmm. go and fail and build your cornerstone mm -hmm. because that's how it happens. I think it was Andre 3000 that said once, like, when you get somewhere and you're lost because you don't have any reference points, I you don't mean, find something new by going to places that are familiar. So if you're like, I don't know if I'm doing this right, you're in the right place. Yeah. And you're also in the right place to receive whatever download you're supposed to be. Because if you're like, I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing, it's the equivalent to being in the middle of the desert and all you see is the clear night sky. There's nothing impeding your vision and there's nothing distracting you. So now all you're going to get are the downloads that are for you. Then it's your responsibility to experiment with that, play with it. You don't have to be heavy with it. Like, oh, my God, I just got this information. I have to do it right. It's like, no, <laughs> like, play with it. Ooh, does it do this? No, it doesn't do that. Okay, cool. What else does it do? Like, being curious and having fun. It's hard to remember to have fun when you're trying to pay your bills, find food, do other things, like take yeah. care of family members, whatever the case may be. But even if you just picked one day a week, or if you feel that you can afford to pick one quarter or maybe one year to be like, you know what? Everyone else is gonna have to figure their stuff out for this period of time. So whether it's one day, one quarter, or one year, what would happen if you prioritize your curiosity that's led by like, oh, what can this do with excitement? without putting the burden on yourself or your talent to make it make money for everybody else. What could you find with that? That could be an interesting thing to explore for anybody that's listening to this. Yeah. But I think that goes back to the intention of why you started the podcast was to share. It was like holistically dope is an opportunity for me to teach people what these processes look like in theory. And then Carly's couch is an opportunity to be like, well, that doing shit. <laughs> Here's what we learned from this. <laughs> so right. talk a little bit about your intention behind the podcast and why it's important for you to share. Because we've already talked about why Holistically Dope is important to share yeah. what you've learned and how it applies to 
a specific demographic for a specific outcome. What's the intention for the podcast and why is sharing your process as you're in it important to you? So I, I think I'll clarify. I think Alyssa the Dope is for anybody, but I've only worked with specific demographics. Um, mm. You know, adults. I've worked. I've worked with adults. I prefer you know adults and startups and leadership positions, all that stuff. But I like what you said about Carly's couch because we really have been catalog cataloging our lives essentially for the last going on four years. Um, yeah. <laughs> last one hundred and eighty five episodes. Weeks. Yeah, weeks. Those are weeks. Every Monday, we are out every Monday. Oh, I'm sorry. Any past one hundred eighty five weeks. Yeesh. Yes. Any any place you listen to podcasts, we're there. But. I think it's important because it helps us grow, um, like having to really explain something. And so every time we talk about a subject every week, I swear a life offers an opportunity for me to really dig in and put, like prove to life what I, that I meant what I said. I swear. I, when I tell you we talked about detachment and I just had this whole week of like attachment. When we talked about difficult conversation, I had seven days of difficult conversations. Like anything that we've talked about has been like, in my life, I don't know if that's a self-fulfilling prophecy or chicken came before the egg, but we always, I always end up like living through whatever we talk about. But it's cool because our mindsets have grown and changed so much. Um, I think the space is necessary and we do have a lot of fun, but it's also. I finally turned off my alarm, sorry. But uh, Carly's Couch is really cathartic because it gives us an opportunity to discuss intimate and vulnerable topics in a real way in a brave space where we don't get to. Um, and I don't know if it's brave as much as it's just me and one of my friends like growing through things together. But it's also great because we're very much opposites. Like I'm real touchy feely, mm. heart led, all these things where, whereas Alexia is very, I'm gonna call her skeptical, but she is a, one of the best question askers I've ever met. And I love that because she'll challenge me. Like I'll be like, oh, you know, I feel like this. She's like, do you feel like that? Explain. Like, why do you feel like that? And I'm like, say more oh, about that. Yeah, no, 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 maybe I don't feel like that. Maybe I'm just stuck in my head about these thoughts. And it's like, you know, oh, wow, I didn't realize. So we be having revelations on the podcast. But I think it's so important to catalog our own journey. And then just all the feedback from everybody about the episodes that, you know, there are such thoughtful conversations that it's like they're sitting there on the couch with us, just, you know, able to talk through these things in a well researched and honest um open way because we 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 be telling all our business you want to learn some stuff about me and lexi go listen to carly's couch because we every week is inspired by either something we listened to read learned thought about or experienced every mm. single week for the last 185 word well keeping that tradition going it's always helpful to contextualize um what we do in hindsight it's hard to do it like ahead of time like you were saying mm -hmm. you can be in your head thinking where you want to be but until you do the practice you won't know what it is yeah. but now that you look back 185 weeks of this the amount of time that you spent in los angeles working within community your 10 years of your own personal journey to what does self-love mean for me as well as professionally how do i apply all of these things that I've learned from school and these different titles that I've had. Who else can you say, whether it is in our contemporary time, someone you've read about from history, or someone you see that's coming up, that reminds you of where you are in your story, like that contextualizes you, kind of like how, you know, Tina Turner contextualizes Beyonce. Um, you know, Pharrell Williams contextualizes Tyler, the creator. You see what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. how do you put that into a canon? Who would you say kind of contextualize you? Like, if your life is a song, who else is on your playlist? Oh, man. Um, the first person that comes to mind, and I guess I'll just go with, with her as one of them. This She is by all means not the end-all be-all for that playlist or that canon, but Brene Brown. Um, essentially right. because she kind of fell into what she's doing as well, like through her mm -hmm. research. And it's kind of the same way. It's like through my own life, that's how it has guided in everything else that I'm doing. Like it was never an intention to become this life engineer. That's just who I am. And so it happened. Um, and so I would say through her studies and she, with vulnerability, and then she shares a lot of her personal stories and 
you know what she's learning. She asks people hard questions. She asks herself the hard questions. She keeps growing and apologizing and, you know, speaking and doing all the things that, you know, people do. So I think she's a great example of someone who's vulnerable and raw. Um, I also really enjoy Kyle Cease. Um, he's an author and he also has like a, a like motivational speaker type person and Dr. Joe Dispenza. Mm. Um, each in their own rights and different things about their journeys, but you know, just using what they've learned through research, through their own learnings, but mostly through their life to help other people. That is what their goal is. And that's kind of the same thing, you know, with me, like everything I do is to uplift, like rising tides raise all ships. That's, that's like the thing that I live by. That's what I want to do. I want to, you know, love on people and hopefully inspire them and make their lives a little bit better um, through things that I do and like leading, leading by example. Word, word. And I think that you're doing it. I mean, <clears throat> the fact that you and I have been on sometimes ships in the night and on sometimes like on point, <laughs> but like every conversation is super potent. It's like, oh, and when these two stars get together, boom, and it's a whole bunch of other things. It's, it's very telling of what your intention is, how fluently you've gotten in the language of yourself mm. because you've practiced it. But that's not a clear career path for a lot of people. And especially when you come from a very conservative, closed-minded place. Like, again, I grew up in Indiana, so I understand that. But like, yeah. what were some of the roadblocks, you know, gatekeepers, people being like, oh, I mean, I hear what you're doing, but do you think maybe you should like go this way or get this job? Or like, what's your real job though? Or like the whole thing, like talk a little bit about like what the, <laughs> received wisdom or received standards that you've encountered and how you made your own interpretation or blatant disregard of them and created your own space for yourself and made peace with it. Blatant disregard. All of it. All of it. It is a wall. Y'all are not penetrating my dreams. You are not raining on my parade. Whenever I started, um, whenever I was in the traditional career path, everybody was like, yeah, go Carly, woo! But then whenever I told everybody I was leaving construction to go to business school, um, man, here's what they used to say, man, I always wanted to go to business school. What are you going to do to pay for school? What are you going to do with all that student debt? Have you figured out what kind of job you're going to take after? Wouldn't it be smarter to stay at the company and have them pay for your MBA? You know, just all these people projecting all of their fears and their life experiences and things on me. Similar when I was graduating from USC, uh, even the counselors, they were like, what do you want to do when I first got there? And I was like, I want to help people and I want to make money. And here's what I'm thinking. They're like, yeah, we don't know how to do that. The counselor at USC literally told me, we don't know how to do that. But if you want to do consulting, I got you. Um, but then I found the Brittingham Social Enterprise Lab at USC, which is fo focused solely on the community and social enterprise. Shout out to Adelaide Wortman. Um, they were, you know, my people when I was in school because the rest of it was not my people. But mm. um even when I was graduating, I remember I went to Columbia with my best friend, Stacey Ann, and her mentor came. And her mentor was like, yeah, so Carly, what are you going to do after graduation? And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to start a company. Um, it's going to be called Holistically Dope. She was like, do you have a wealthy family that we don't know about? Um, like, you know, what's your, what's your plan for how you're going to pay for everything? And I was like, are, are y'all in my head? Like, are y'all going to pay for it? Because a lot of people are asking about my pockets, but nobody's offering up bread. So what's going on? Um, mm. But what I just told her is I was like, no. And she was like, I mean, it just seems a little naive. And I was like, to you, perhaps. I was like, but I didn't come to school to go back and do what I was doing before. I could have stayed and done that. I was like, I'm yeah. not, I don't, I don't have to play it safe. And then she was just like, well, you know, I'm, I'm not, she was like, I don't want to, you know, be offensive. I just don't know if that makes sense. And I'm like, I mean, it makes sense to me, but it, that's okay. Cause it doesn't have to make sense to you. And I had to mm -hmm. become okay with the fact that not everybody understands your vision, like God or the universe or whatever you believe in, if you're in alignment, it's going to give you a vision. And I'm one of those people, sometimes I can't even articulate what it is, but I know what it feels like in my heart. And that's all that matters. I know I'm on the right track. I know I'm sleeping on my friend's couch. I know this looks crazy, but this is what makes sense to me. And if I have to hustle, if I have to work three jobs, if I can do whatever I got to do to get this done, I'm going to do it. And yeah, I just had to blatantly disregard everybody because even people now still say stuff like, and that's okay. But you have to realize that most people are walking around led by fear. And if you mm -hmm. let it, if you let it, they will shut down your vision and they will shut you down so fast. And 
I'm like a real big hearted person. I'm sensitive. And so I have to protect myself from that. Like, that's why other people in my life, they know, like they speak life into me. They believe in me. They might not understand, but they mm -hmm. believe in me, you know, and they believe in that I'm, I'm able to make things happen. Um, it's also funny trying to explain this to anybody in my family and or my first, like I'm first generation. And so my father's from the Philippines and he cannot put together for the life of him why I gave up an engineering degree for this. He's like, why don't you just use your degree? Not like, you know, he'll be, he's so, he's like, he's like, I don't know why you choose to suffer. And I'm like, all right. Mm. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So blame <clears throat> you guys, essentially. Interesting. There's, there's so much there. Uh, I'm pretty sure anybody that's watching this right now or watching this in recap immediately can think of at least three people that are like, Oh, mm -hmm, that's that person that's in that particular. Yep, mm -hmm, for sure. Mm -hmm. And shout out to J. Cole for always doing what he does, but just released a project and there's a record on there by Boss. And he has that's a line where he says, lifestyle's not for you, but it's for me. And just like, very simple. It's like, oh, I'm gonna own it. And by owning it, shuts all that stuff down. Like the only thing that would make me feel guilty is if I felt that I was disappointing your vision because i still bought into your vision when i let your vision go i'm good lifestyle's not for you but it's for me and this is for me and this works for me even though it may not seem like it i have peace because i just i am the seed and i just chose not to suffer but i chose to bury myself in this shit because below the shit is the soil mm -hmm. So while you're worried about the smell and everything else I'm going to have to come up through, you're definitely going to want one of these apples. Look, and I'm also going to quote one of my favorite hip hop philosophers. I love my life. Y'all can hate that shit. Nipsey. Like, listen, it, listen, look, look, listen. But you really have to, whenever, you, that's why I said it's more of a creator culture that I buy into because if you live by, you know, American patriarchal white pretty much standards, those define all the American standards, like, can make you feel so small and so out of place and like nothing is for you and it's not we have to create our own stuff and whenever you're and able yeah. to let that go like that's whenever you really find out who you are but it's not until you let go of that and also let go of your attachment to all the people that you care about thinking that your life has to look a certain way it's not just you know mm -hmm. them it's also you and your attachment to wanting to make them proud or wanting to be successful or wanting to whatever yeah and i think that there's something really powerful to understand that there are enough examples of people that have succeeded at that particular narrative, regardless of how narrow it may seem, that it makes it feel weird. Like, but why would you do something else? But if you realize that focusing on one singular narrative is the equivalent to only watching one channel, but you're paying for a cable package that has literally every channel that exists. Don't you want to see what other things are on there? You might stumble on something channel surfing and be like, oh, this is actually way more interesting or way oh, more accurate to what I'm looking for. But I've been focusing on one channel and it comes in really clear, but also like it doesn't really work for me. So I complain about it versus, oh, this one's a little fuzzy, but all the content on here is exactly what I'm looking for. And like understanding that if you can open your aperture and accept mm -hmm. the idea of other narratives working, you might find it. Or you might find that everywhere that you failed was making a path for somebody else to succeed. So maybe it's not meant for you to succeed in your predecessor's eyes. Maybe it's meant for you to leave your notes so that you end up looking like a success to those that come behind you. That's so beautifully put. And also like who says not like, getting through something the traditional way is a failure i hate that narrative like i i know yeah. i i don't really like benjamin franklin but to quote you know the ten thousand ways not to do something like mm -hmm. you know what i mean like we're literally just figuring things out and there's no real one right or wrong way to do anything or to have a relationship or to build a company or to live a life and so it's like you know where focus goes energy flows and so making sure that you're really just focusing on those dreams instead of anything else that doesn't matter because the more energy you're expending outward the less you have for yourself for your heart for your dreams for your joy like game changer 
you have to find ways to find your joy every single day and or to create it like that's I think if more people did that it would make the world a better place 100% agree and to close out in the words of Nip that's how I knew that I was different <laughs> how you know and there's something beautiful about that so shout out shameless plugs where can people find you how can people support the work that you're doing uh with holistically dope how can people tune into carly's couch how can people um send you money because they believe in you fundamentally but they are like you know what here's something towards the cause just on gp like how can people show up for you in the ways that you've already described that you've been showing up for others man so um Carly'sCouch.com. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, YouTube if you want to watch us while you work, um, Stitcher. We're everywhere, but Carly, C-A-R-L-I-E-S, Couch.com. Support me and Lexi. All of our tags are there. Um, I'm on Instagram at CC Fierce, also at Holistically Dope. If you want to check out more of the work, I'm doing HolisticallyDope.com. And then the newest venture that I have are self-care products. So I make body butters and about to launch some self-care boxes and some other experiences. So you can get those. Um, H-E-A-U-X, ho, butters. Um, you can get those. You can check on my page. I have a link there. And if you want to, like, if you, you can support that way um, and, you know, do that. Buy some butters. And that's a way to give me money. Uh, otherwise, it's just Carly Carpio on Cash App or Carly Dash Carpio on Venmo. There it is. Well, if you have a problem spelling uh, the name of the products, just go find Jasmine Sullivan's Grammy-nominated album, Hotels. It's spelled oh, the same way. Y'all got it. But just add butter at the end, so it's like... And put butters in the butter. back of it. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you grew up in the Lil John era, ho. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. Exactly. So, <laughs> housekeeping for Burnt Sienna. Uh, next up, we have a lot of interesting things happening here in April. Um... I will be doing our show and tell on Saturday, uh, the 23rd, as opposed to the 21st at Arcana, part of the Seeding the City um, exhibition that they're doing over at Helms Bakery. So stay tuned for more details about that. There may be a talk involved in that. Don't know who the guest is going to be. We're going to figure out, but it's kind of like a show and tell and nobody asked for this in the same space. It's going to be interesting, but this will be the first show and tell where we get to invite people, the public in. So that should be really fun to just meet other book collectors so look out for that um there's going to be a massive migration of where nobody asked for this is found over the next couple of weeks i've been foreshadowing this for a while just kind of getting people ready for it but no we're about to do in-person filming and housing it on youtube so that as carly was saying you can watch it in the background you work on your tv or on your laptop so that you're not holding your phone for an hour but if you've been watching this for the past 55 plus minutes we appreciate your time. We appreciate you being here. Um, in the bio for Burnt Sienna, you'll find a link to subscribe to our newsletter. That's going to be the best way to find out what's going on each week. Trying to overload people with too many things because it's hard mm -hmm. to plan for things because life be life in. But okay. this conversation of learning how to be a bit more critical in your thinking but expansive in your solutions is the underpinning of everything that we stand for here. And so thank you very much, Carly, for being open and honest and just showing up because some people don't feel that their story is worth telling until they tell it. And I hope that you feel a bit more triumphant in where you've arrived to, maybe more so than you initially thought, but um, it's nice to help eulogize people while they're still breathing. I appreciate that. Um, can we do one more thing together? For sure. Have whoever's here, let's take a quick breath together because, you know, good transition space to something else. So <clears throat> sit up as tall as you can. Shake out your shoulders. Kind of loosen your jaw. You can close your eyes if that feels good. We'll do three breaths together. Big inhale through your nose. Hold it at the top just for a second. And then nice, slow exhale out of your mouth. Relax your shoulders. Two more big breaths. Big inhale through your nose. Try to fill up your belly. Hold it at the top. Nice, slow exhale out of your mouth. Last one here. Biggest breath you've taken all day. Big inhale through your nose. Fill up your belly. Hold it at the top. Try to sip in just a little bit more air. 
And then slow exhale out of your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out of your mouth. And then gently blink open your eyes. I think I'm ready for my weekend now. Bam! Friday. Enjoy. Mm. We have beautiful weather here in LA. Hopefully y'all do wherever you are too. Well, that's on brand, if anything. We'll see y'all here in the coming weeks. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, be kind to yourself. Be kind to your neighbors. And um, it's always worth the extra thought. Keep thinking. We'll see you soon. Bye, y'all.